So this is courgettes. We grow about 70 acres of courgettes. We also have peas and beans, brassicas and sprouts and cabbages. So our farm is about 3,000 acres and it's about 1,200 of vegetables. And then we also have uh, wheat, barley and oats and a flock of 800 breeding ewes. Super. And people are clearly a, a big part of your business. How many people do you employ? Um, at the moment, in the, in the summer season, we're up to 180. Um, we have 70 permanent uh, harvest staff, stroke pack house staff, um, and the extra is what we take on seasonally for the pea and bean picking in the summer. Our biggest concern is the labour force, our workforce. If we don't have a workforce that's within a cost structure, then what's the point of growing vegetables? Uh, we plan to carry on next year and see what happens. At the moment, uh, there's no indication where our labour force is going to come from. Um, and therefore, if we don't have a labour force, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much we want to grow courgettes, peas, beans, brassicas. If you can't harvest them, what's the point in planting them? You're only going to do that once. Mm. Yeah, and so you've got 22 uh, people working on site here today uh, harvesting the courgette crop. Um, you know, what are you having to do now with them in terms of trying to get them to remain within your business, within your cost structure? Are there, are there things you're having to do? Well, they're part of our permanent uh, yeah. staff. We're making sure that they're um, doing settled status. Uh, we're helping them make sure with their own governments that they will be able to come back because they all like to go home at the end of the season with us, which is uh, in um, March. They tend to have April off and come back for planting in, in May. So again, we do have a seasonal workforce in the summer, but we also have a permanent workforce. in the autumn, which we're now in, we can plant crops knowing we're going to get them harvested. Because if we can't harvest them, it doesn't matter how much the supermarkets and their customers want to buy British. If we can't harvest it, we can't grow it. So Martin, obviously this year a lot of effort was put into the Pick for Britain scheme uh, to uh, try and recruit more UK nationals uh, into uh, the labour force to help harvest our crops this year. Um, our understanding is about roughly uh, of the labour force that's been working on farms harvesting crops this year. It's about 6% is what we've got up to of UK nationals, uh, which is, you know, it's obviously bigger than previous years, but it's nowhere meeting our, our, our total labour needs. You know, what's been, yeah, the story for your business in terms of uh, recruiting UK nationals and, and how do you see that going forward? Well, we, we had seven UK nationals come and join us. Um, they've now gone back either to university or um, to try and find another job. Uh, one w had just finished his degree as being a journalist, so he wants to be a journalist. When I spoke to them, they were quite dynamic and normally they would be working in festivals, realising that they weren't going to happen and therefore they wouldn't be earning money that way. They wanted to find a job, but they didn't see us as being somewhere permanent and next year, if the festivals were open, that's where they thought they would be going. Yeah, so obviously you, you'll, you'll take whoever's coming, but it still feels like a big challenge to get the labour force in place to, yes. to support your business. We don't mind who they are, um, but the government isn't telling us where those people are going to come from.